boys and girls. Welcome to my player ratings for yesterday's draw against Crystal Palace. The winning run is over, but not the unbeaten run. It's still 12 games unbeaten. Now, a lot of people will look at the result and you can look at it one or two ways. It's either two points dropped or it's a point gained. Now, I can see both sides of the argument. We're around about 10 minutes away from winning the game and then we give away another penalty, regardless of the fact that I believe it was a dive and we could all see that. It's still annoying to let a lead slip. But on the other side of it, we didn't play well. Crystal Palace were the better side. If we were to beat them, they would feel really aggrieved by that. And we could walk away from there feeling quite fortunate, let's just say that. We didn't look good yesterday. We looked tired. We look completely off the pace and you can tell that we've just played our third game in six days. This was my issue last week before the Leicester game and the fact that we had to play on a Monday night. Sky, they had no consideration whatsoever for the players. You know, we knew that we were going out to Portugal on Thursday. Then we've got to come back to the game against Crystal Palace. And they put that game against Leicester on the Monday. Why not the Saturday? Why not the Sunday? That extra day is massive. A lot of people might not think that, you know, one extra day, but it is. You know, the likes of Granit Xhaka, he's had to play all of those games. Two of them, he's had to play out of position to try and help the team because we've lost our only two recognised left backs. And you could see that. You look at the incident right at the end. Yes, he left his leg out, and I feel that a bit of tiredness was a factor in it. But was it a penalty? No, of course it wasn't a penalty. He dived. When you get tripped, your legs do not join together and you do not flip yourself in the air. Wilfred Sahar is a cheat. It's that simple. Whatever way you look at it, he dived. And he complains all the time about the way he's being treated from referees. I've seen some of the tackles on him. And yes, there are some bad ones and I don't condone that. But a lot of what you do is self-inflicted. It's the reason why referees don't give you decisions. Because you dive everywhere. You might as well be an Olympian. Seriously. I'm not going to even get onto the subject, no more, because it winds me up. Cheating. End of story. Simple. Apart from that, Crystal Palace, fair play. You played really, really well. You certainly played better than the side that, you know, I've been watching over the last few weeks. And if you carry on like that, then you won't be in any problems this season. You won't be fighting relegation. Um, so yeah, like I said, fair play. You will probably walk away from the game feeling a little aggrieved that you've only got one point. And like I said, we'll come away from the game thinking it's a point gained rather than two points dropped. So with that said, let's go and get into my player ratings. Now, what I'm going to say about this is that there weren't too many players that are going to get high ratings from this. And um, as usual... Let me know in the comment section whether you agree or disagree and what your player ratings are. First of all, we're going to go with the goalkeeper, Bernd Leno. And it was a massive decision. Petacek's back. He could have easily swapped it round, but he didn't. He showed faith in Leno. And I think that was the correct thing to do. Didn't have a chance with the penalties. It's a lottery. It's a 50-50. Um, apart from that, he done absolutely fine. Um, kicking was decent. Coming out for crosses and punching and whatnot. Absolutely fine. Decent performance from Leno. And he will keep his place in the team during the Premier League games. And I will give Bern Leno for yesterday's game a 7. Going to move into the defensive area. First of all, Hector Bellerin. Now, of course, Hector came off at half-time. So I'm going to judge him on his first half performance. Um, and it was straightforward. You know what? There wasn't really a lot to do in that first half. Um, there was one incident which I felt he should have scored from and he took too much time. It was kind of the wrong player in the right place. Um, but yeah, like I said, he came off injured 
And um, it'll be interesting to see whether he's going to be fit for the game against Liverpool this weekend. Um, but for yesterday's game, I'm going to give Hector Bellerin a five. Going to move into the central defensive area. First of all, we're going to go with Rob Holding. Um, out of the two between him and Mustafi, he was the better one. Didn't really do too much wrong, but it wasn't the greatest of games for our defenders. Um, and quite simply, for yesterday's game, I'm going to give Rob Holding a six. Uh, going to move to the next player, and that is Mustafi. Now, what can I say about this guy? What do I say in my previews and my build-ups to games all the time? He has a good game, he has a bad game. He has a good game, he has a bad game. He had a great game against Leicester, and then he has a shocking game against Crystal Palace. He was absolutely awful. Why are you diving in and making that tackle for the first penalty? Honestly, brain dead. Anyone can see, what are you doing? Simple as that, really. Do I need to say any more? You look at the second goal. Why are you not taking one for the team and cleaning out the guy on the halfway line? And you're letting him just waltz past you. You slide all over the pitch. Stay on your feet. It's simple football that's taught at such a young age. Stay on your feet, man. As soon as it's wet and I see Mustafi playing, I'm like, oh, here we go. It's going to go sliding all over the pitch like a little kid in a swimming pool. It's annoying. Yesterday's performance, shocking. Mustafi, you get a one. Simple as that. Going to move into the left back position. Granite Shaka, one of the players that could hold his head up. He's playing out of position. He's not a left back. Nowhere near a left back. But he done a decent job. Yes, he gave away the last minute penalty. Well, last minute, but seven minutes or so to go. Um, and you could kind of say that he left a leg hanging. But like I said, he doesn't play in that position. Apart from that, he had a decent game. Worked really hard. And there were not a lot of problems caused down that side. Which is quite a surprise when you think that he doesn't normally play there. Um, but yeah, for yesterday's game, I'm going to give Granite Xhaka a seven going to move into the midfield area first of all Lucas Torreira one player that can hold his head up he was all over the pitch getting stuck in winning tackles you know the problems were behind him you know he can't deal with Mustafi sliding all over the place that's not his job he can't legislate that so yeah Lucas Torreira does exactly what he needs to do um, but I do feel that he missed Granite Xhaka next to him in terms of the creativity wise and I feel that yesterday, you see just how important Shaka is to that midfield alongside Torreira. But for Torreira, I'm going to give him an 8 for yesterday. He was my man of the match, actually. I felt that he was the one who could hold his head up. Um, alongside him, we've got the young lad, Gwendozi. Worked really, really hard. Um, not going to criticise him and say that, you know, Shaka's better and whatnot. And he does more in terms of the creative side. But you can see the difference between the two and he's, he's a kid he's still learning I've said that worked hard got stuck in and um, for yesterday's performance I'm going to give Gwendozi a seven going to move into the attacking three uh, first of all Alex Awobi again a hard working performance but he was not as clinical and as cutting edge as he has been over the last few weeks worked hard like I said but just lacked that little bit of creativity in the final third and it was an off day um, so I'm going to give Alex Awobi a seven going to move into that 10 role Meza Ozil and it was the complete contrast to the Leicester performance um, not good not good at all he was pissed off with being taken off I don't mind that um, because he wants to play but he needs to do more in this kind of game I don't think it was suited to him I think that you know the way that Crystal Palace set up there was hardly any space. That's where he needs to find space. Go and grab, you know, the game by the scruff of the neck and whatnot. Um, but yeah, not a good day. Not a good day at all. So for yesterday, I'm going to give Meza Ozil a five. Going to move to the other position, and that's Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Again, works hard. I still feel he needs to play a little closer to Lacazette. But he scored. Joint top goal scorer in the Premier League. I told you lot before the start of the season that this guy is going to win the golden boot. And I stick by that. Very, very simple. So, um, yeah, like I said, worked hard, but still needs to be more involved in the game. Um, but for yesterday, I'm going to give Aubameyang a 7. 
Going to move into the striker position and we'll go with Alexandre Lacazette. Not a good day at the office. I love this guy, but yesterday was a poor day for him. Was not good at all and it was compounded by that stupid pass right at the beginning of the second goal. Why is he playing that pass? You know, he doesn't need to be told by me or anyone else. Emery's told him. It's as simple as that. It was a stupid error. And he's going to have to cut that out. It was a bad day at the office. And for yesterday's game, I'm going to give Lacazette a five. Going to move into the substitutions. First of all, Stefan Licksteiner come on at half time. Thought he played really well. Really got up and down that right-hand side. Wasn't exposed um, in terms of the defensive side of things. And, you know, if he has to play against Liverpool then I'm pretty confident that he can go out there and do a professional job. So um, for yesterday's one, I'm going to give Licksteiner a six. Um, looking at the other substitutions, Aaron Ramsey, Danny Welbeck, didn't really come on for much time. Didn't really have an impact on the game. So I'm not going to mark him. Going to move into the manager's rating and I'm going to give Unai Emery a six. Really difficult when you think about three games in six days and whatnot. But I felt that substitutions let him down yesterday. I think that Ozil come off too early. And I think it was wrong to take Aubameyang off as well. I think that we should have gone for the third goal. Instead of sitting back and trying to hold on to what we had. But I feel maybe a bit of that was because of the tiredness. They looked really jaded. And they just didn't have it in them to go for that in the last 15-20 minutes. Um, so yeah, I'm, it's a difficult one like I said. But... Um, Emery, he gets a six for the game. It's as simple as that as far as I'm concerned. I felt the substitutions were wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Who knows? But like I always say, let me know in the comment section whether you agree or disagree. So there we have it. That is my player ratings for the game. Um, bad day at the office, but we still got a point and we're still unbeaten. Like I said many times during this video, let me know in the comment section whether you agree, disagree. What are your player ratings? If you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We go into Carabao Cup action on Wednesday against Blackpool. There will be a preview to that tomorrow. Match day vlog after the game and then the player ratings on Thursday before we go into the massive game against Liverpool. So there we go. 12 wins unbeaten. We've lost our Ws, but there's no L there. So, uh, so far, so good. I will see you lot soon. I'm out of here.